Castle Bravo, a human-made Armageddon. So let's get right into it. On Monday, March 1st, 1954, at 6.45 in the morning, the United States carried out its largest nuclear detonation ever, codenamed Castle Bravo, at the Bikini Atoll in the South Pacific Marshall Islands. Both military servicemen and Marshall Islanders got to experience firsthand what Armageddon would truly be like. The explosion turned out to be 2.5 times bigger than planned and caused far higher levels of radioactive fallout than ever predicted. Castle Bravo was simply the worst radiological disaster in American atomic history. The Marshall Islands isolation had proved to be a blessing throughout the history. The small island chain, about 1,800 miles from Papua New Guinea, was free from outside conflict until World War II, when it served as a remote Japanese outpost. After the war, the United States took over the atolls, which is when their remoteness became their curse. The U.S. military realized its isolation made it ideal for testing nuclear bombs. In 1964, the U.S. military governor asked the native Bikini Atoll residents to temporarily relocate for the good of mankind. The islanders agreed, believing they would be able to return to their homes after a few months. Bikini Atoll would remain uninhabitable for more than 70 years. The Bravo bomb was the first in Operation Castle, a series of thermonuclear tests by the United States military. Nicknamed the Shrimp, the bomb weighed 23,500 pounds and was America's first weaponized hydrogen bomb meant to be delivered by bomber. Shrimp ended up yielding the equivalent of 15 megatons of TNT. Scientists had seriously miscalculated and expected only five. They based the location of observation points and ships outside a safety exclusion zone based on a five megaton yield. Zero hour for Castle Bravo was just after dawn at 6.45 a.m. local time. Officers, scientists, and servicemen yawned and drank black coffee as they stretched and waited. From the moment the bomb detonated, everyone knew that something had gone terribly wrong. A so-called tritium bonus occurred in the nuclear reaction, causing extremely energetic fusion. An explosion began that can only be described as apocalyptic. The flash was overwhelming, even by the standards of atomic bombs. Men saw their bones appear as shadows through their skin. Blinding light burst through the smallest cracks and secured doors. Bravo's blast wave was far more than intense. 30 miles away from ground zero, Navy sailors said the heat was like having a blowtorch applied to their uniforms. Battle-hardened World War II veterans took to their knees, believing they were witnessing the end of the world. Seconds after detonation, a mushroom cloud 4.5 miles wide began to rapidly grow. It rose 1,000 feet per second into the sky, topping out at 130,000 feet. The shock wave destroyed buildings outside of the expected damage zone and nearly knocked the observation planes out of the sky. The fireball itself was hotter than the surface of our sun. Castle Bravo ended up being 1,000 times more powerful than Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The explosion left a 250-foot deep crater on the ocean floor, a diameter of 6,500 feet. But that was just the beginning of the disaster. It released so much radioactive debris into the atmosphere that it fell over 7,000 square miles. It contaminated the inhabitants of all the nearby Marshall Island atolls. The U.S. servicemen present, and even the unfortunate crew of a Japanese fishing trawler. To make matters worse, weather forecasters predicted that high altitude winds would blow the fallout away from the inhabited islands. Instead, the wind blew the, radi the radioactive cloud toward them. Fallout rained on ships and sailors. Captains ordered entire crews below deck and sealed all hatches for days to escape contamination. Despite knowing the risk of spreading fallout to the nearby inhabited islands, 
Major General Percy Clarkson had ordered the test to continue as planned. The wind spread radioactive particles downwind, affecting the inhabited atolls of Rongelap, Uderich, and Lingalay. Fallout dusted the U.S. servicemen stationed on nearby Rongelak Island. Approximately five hours after detonation, it began to rain radioactive fallout on the island. Within hours, the atoll was covered in a fine white powder. No one knew it was radioactive fallout. Delighted children giggled and played in the snow, even licking it off their hands. About 90 minutes after the explosion, the fallout reached an unfortunate Japanese fishing boat, the fifth lucky dragon, about 80 miles east of the test site. All 23 crew members were severely exposed to high levels of radiation, one dying months later. The radiated fish were brought back to Japan and unknowingly entered the food market, later causing a panic. With the memory of Hiroshima only nine years earlier, this created a diplomatic nightmare and provoked international outrage. The United States eventually agreed to pay more than 15 million in compensation to the fishing boat survivors. Emergency evacuations by the United States were too slow to limit lethal doses of radiation, and Marshall Islanders didn't know about the consequences of fallout. The U.S. military evacuated Rongelap two days after the test, re relocating people to Majuro, the capital. Within a week, the U.S. launched a study on the effects of the radiation on the islanders and provided medical care. The military, however, never explained to the inhabitants that a study was being conducted on them. Rarely was there even a translator present. The Marshallese were given pills with no explanation as to why. For years later, the Marshall Islanders experienced numerous health problems, including birth defects and thyroid cancer. Since Castle Bravo, the United States has had to provide more than one billion to the affected atolls, which includes medical treatment, health care, island rehabilitation, and resettlement. The two countries reached a bilateral agreement designed to award compensation for cancers and other serious health effects, such as burns and birth defects. Atmospheric wind shear and ocean currents continue to spread fallout from the explosion. Traces of radioactive material were later found in Japan, Australia, and even India. Castle Bravo was not the first test at Bikini Atoll. The United States held 67 atmospheric tests in the Pacific Ocean through 1958. And the United States was not the only country conducting atmospheric testing. The Soviet Union equaled the U.S. in its Cold War nuclear program. Marshall Islanders finally began to return home in the early 1970s, nearly 30 years after testing began. However, surveillance in 1978 found that the inhabitants of the atoll exhibited dangerously high levels of radioactivity and the entire population was once again evacuated. The natives are still in forced exile. Today, the danger comes from consuming contaminated food or water. The detonation crater is still visible from the air. It looks like a fierce dragon took a mighty chomp of the atoll. And in a way, it had. Castle Bravo triggered a backlash around the world against atmospheric nuclear testing. In 1955, the United Nations created the Scientific Community on the Effects of Atomic Radiation. In 1963, the Limited Test Ban Treaty between the, between the United States and the Soviet Union finally prohibited nuclear testing in the atmosphere or underwater. For better or worse, nuclear tests could henceforth only be conducted underground. Castle Bravo's fallout even inspired the creation of a Japanese science fiction movie, le movie legend, the great Godzilla, King of Monsters. <laughs>